Saturday night is fight night, and this fight features a Brooklyn Knight. I promise you I did not mean for that to rhyme, but Edgar Berlanga is the Brooklyn Knight. He is returning to the theater at the Garden to battle Jason Quigley. So let's break it down with two of the best covering the sport of boxing. Joining me are the hosts of the Mandatory Boxing Show. That would be Chantel Shan and Brian Fonseca. You see Chantel to your left, Brian to my right. Guys, how are you doing? Doing good, Dex. Thanks so much for having us on. Always good to what have she you said. guys on. Yeah, uh, what she said. That's just, just, <laughs> just, let, just let Chantel do the work and just say what yeah, she just said. Let her, just let her handle, I, handle I the see, uh, startup question. I see how it's going. So, Brian, I'm glad you just said what she said. We're going to hear what she said. That is Chantel. We're going to start with her. Chantel Berlanga, he is 20-0 with 16 knockouts. His first 16 pro fights, they were all by KOs in the first round. And then the next four fights were all unanimous decision victories. So Berlanga's power, it was impressive early on, but have we learned anything more about him as a fighter in his recent fights where he went to distance? Yeah, I mean, I think the funny part about it is when he was knocking out dudes on that 16-fight KO streak, everyone was talking about how they wanted to see him go the distance. And when he did go the distance, it wasn't a very impressive fight for him. And then people started to quote, question if he still had it so in a sense I feel like he was set up to fail because he had so much success early on and then the guys that he fought where he went the distance you talk about Deadman Nicholson um, you also talk about Steve Rolls Coceres who dropped him as well so that chin is a little bit suspect they know how to use the ring you also talk about uh, Romer Alexis and Gulo as well and that was a fight where Edgar Berlanga bit him and that's why he also recently just served a suspension so it's been a year since he's been in the ring but I think what we've kind of learned from him is he has a really good jab. He has that raw power, but he really has to cut off the ring and get these W's, and they want to see him do it in style. Another thing about him, though, I feel like he headhunts a bit and defensively needs to get better, but I think there's a lot of questions about that chin as well. And, of course, we're just waiting to see a knockout from him again because it's been since 2020 since we've seen one. Yeah, it's been a while. We'd like to see that again. And we've seen impressive knockouts. Brian and I were there in 2018 for one of his where we saw that in the first round at the King's Theater in Brooklyn. So we know the power that he has. So, Brian, let me ask you this, and you can't just give it to Chantel. You have to actually give us an answer, Brian, here. This is a 12-round super middleweight bout where Berlanga's opponent, Jason Quigley, he sports a 20-2 and record. Is this Berlanga's toughest test to date? And how important is this fight for Berlanga and where he is in his career right now? Well, it's one of only two contenders that he's fought so far. If you include Steve Rolls in that, and you have to because he lost to Gennady Golovkin. And part of that was Gennady Golovkin knocks out Steve Rolls in, I believe, the fourth round years prior to when Edgar Berlanga fights him, and they go to distance. And not only that, Steve Rolls wins rounds. This can't be one of those. Jason Quigley is his toughest opponent yet, probably his most credible. Fought for a world title, was knocked out in the second round by Demetrius Andrade not that long ago. And honestly, his best win is probably against Shane Mosley Jr., who is a contender, but also has four losses. So really, Edgar Berlanga, and this is where we'll get into the betting aspect of this in a little bit, he's a wide favorite for this fight. I think too wide. I think he's going to win for sure, but... I mean, well, not for sure, because this is there has some been there has been some questions about him. And he hasn't been in the ring in a year, but he's back with his old trainer now and he feels rejuvenated. And when I talk to him after the press conference on Thursday, like he's saying all the right things. He's talking to everybody and saying that, you know, changes and fatherhood and all these different things have impacted him. We'll see because Jason Quigley is tough. He's not coming in there to lie down. And Andy Lee, his trainer, who is a former middleweight champion in his own right, he feel like he has the tools, and Jason Quigley has the tools in particular to really stretch this fight out and make Edgar Berlanga look less than what he has been going into this fight. Okay, don't sleep on Jason Quigley here. All right, guys, you are the boxing betting experts here, so give me your best bet and let the people know who comes out on top in the Berlanga versus Quigley matchup. Chantel, I'm going to start with you. Well, you take a look at the odds, and Vegas knows that Edgar Berlanga is going to be looking for this knockout, and that's kind of why I feel like they have picked Jason Quigley for this fight. Not to sleep on Jason Quigley, because as you heard Brian say, it is his toughest opponent, but when you take a look at the odds, Vegas is expecting a knockout, but there's not a lot of value there. It's a minus 310. I do think that Edgar Berlanga has a chance to get the knockout in this one, but I want to go where there is some value. And round 7 through 12, it is a 
a plus 600. The reason why I'm saying round seven through 12 is because number one, we haven't seen him knock out anyone since 2020. And number two, there's some ring rust. It's been a little bit about a year since he's actually been in the ring. So I think that's going to be a factor leading into this one. Jason Quigley is his toughest opponent. And I also think the fact that he's gone the distance his last four fights, I think there's some value as well to sprinkle on Edgar Berlanga going the distance as well. And uh, if you do that, it's a plus four 20 to for him to win by decision but i don't think anyone wants him to go the distance in this fight i think everyone's expecting the knockout very likely since jason quickly has been knocked out twice but i think there's some good value in either of those either the decision at plus 420 or if you want to do alternate round betting round 7 through 12 for berlanga to get the knockout and that is of course a plus 600 so lots of value there all right lots of value there brian where are you finding the value in terms of bets and who do you see winning this fight Obviously, Edgar Berlanga, I see winning this fight. Not because I'm Puerto Rican, and uh, we kind of need this as an island. But on top of that, Edgar Berlanga is really favored by the books. Minus 1450 on the money line. So you're not looking to bet there. If you're looking at group round betting, as Chantel just alluded to, rounds one through four is where you're going to get the shortest odds, and that's plus 120. They're expecting this to be early. They're expecting this to be a classic Edgar Berlanga performance. I'm not sure how classic it's going to be. And if you stretch it to rounds, one through six, you're getting minus 175. And straight up on a knockout is obviously minus 310, as Chantel alluded to. So you're not getting a ton of value unless you think this is going to happen late in the fight. If you do think it's going to happen early, let's say if you go one through six, which is probably where I'm leaning at minus 175, but I'm using that as part of a parlay. You got some other fights you could parlay that with, but we're not going to talk about all of them tonight. But I think really what you're looking at is an early knockout at best, but the books are also telling you if this stretches out and goes off in a distance, Jason Quigley might have a chance. And really, that's what it's going to be. Like Jason Quigley is going to have to try to box. But Edgar Berlanga is saying that he can box. He's saying that if this fight goes to distance, he's not going to have any trouble there. We'll ultimately see and find out. I do think that he sort of returns to his old form, but it might not be right away like classic first round knockout form because, again, he hasn't been in the ring in a year, and I think he does want to showcase some of his overall capabilities before eventually getting the stoppage. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see if he can return to that old form, and even if the fight goes long or goes the distance, can he win impressively or exciting? Because people want to see a little bit more exciting if the fight goes further rounds. We shall see. You know who's going to be watching the fight. That is going to be Chantel Shan and Brian Fonseca, the coast of the Mandatory Boxing Show. Go check that out. Subscribe to them. Do all that and everything. Guys, as always, love talking boxing with you. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it.